Hi, this is Lauren from 1469A, and today I'll be doing an overview of our mid-season bot Chimera. So firstly, we're going to start off with an overview of the base. As you can see, we're running four motors. It's going at 333 RPM, and in addition, we're using the 3.125 inch wheels. You'll see the two Omnis on the outer side of the base, and inside we're using one traction wheel. So the next thing we'll be overviewing is the intake system and we are currently running it at 600 RPM. You'll see here we're using the one and a half inch flex wheels and we're also using pneumatic tubing which while not entirely necessary, it helps us get the disc from point A to point B. And the reason I say it's not entirely necessary is because from this first set of rollers to the second set of rollers, the disc is able to pass through without any problem. As you can see, it's hinged between the first and second stage of rollers, and this helps alleviate pressure on the disc. So some of you might be wondering what the C-channel here is for. It actually helps us do a few things. First, it helps protect our intake in a match. It also helps us play defense. And in addition, it can be used to knock down the stacks of three. So we'll demonstrate here real quick. And then while the intake is running, we can show one more thing. So as you'll notice, we're actually running our roller in conjunction with our intake. We also have an optical sensor up here. What this helps us do is when we're at a roller, it can sense if it's either red or blue. And based off that hue value, we are able to change the roller to the color we desire. So moving on to the flywheel, it's pretty straightforward. As you can see, we're running two motors and it's currently running at 3000 RPM. We also have a 68 flex wheel, which is four inches. Some extra components we are using are the new bearings. We have three of them and what they're helping us to do is reduce friction on our flywheel. And in addition, we're also using the flywheel weight. And this is helping us to maintain velocity. Now moving on to the kata, I can just get that position real quick. So what we have here is the front view of our Cata. We're currently running a red cartridge motor. It's going at 100 RPM. And the motor is driving a 12 tooth gear, which is driving two 36 tooth gears with the slip gear in the middle. The slip gear is currently driving a 60 tooth gear, which our catapult arm is connected to. Another thing is we have the rubber stoppers, which stop our arm so it doesn't overshoot. And we also have the rubber bands, which help with the tensioning on the Cata. And as you can see here, we have a limit switch. And what this does is it ensures that our Cata arm does not over rotate. And as you can see here inside the cat arm, we actually have our indexer. So between the two C channels, you'll see that our pneumatic cylinder is actually shoved between those. The last subsystem we'll be going over is our end game, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have been curious about that, so let's just turn it to get a closer look. And basically how this works is we have a weight on the end of each of these strings demonstrate here's the weight it's basically a ring of nuts and there's four to five on each one and we also have rubber banding or latex tubing for the tensioning and what you'll also see here is we have a piece of polycarb which is cut out and the weights are connected to these standoffs so what will happen is the polycarb raises up the weights get lifted up off the standoff and the tension causes it to launch forward and what might be a bit hard to see is we do have these clear polycarb pieces and they're not actually to help us with an angle at all. It's just to make sure that when the nuts do get released that it is in parallel with the standoff over here. So lastly, what I wanted to go over was this smaller launcher over here. And as you'll notice, it is lower than the two others. And this is in case we're very close to the perimeter of the field. We want to make sure that we are not launching out. As we all know, it is a DQ. <laughs> Going over quickly how the smaller launcher works, it actually is in conjunction with this one up here. And what you'll notice is we have a little piece of polycarb, if I can remove this. And it's cut out with a smaller standoff. So it's basically the same thing, just lower down. And I think this was a really interesting design. Another cool thing that is really helpful is what we have on our brake display. Here you can see a couple of things. First is our autonomous selector and quick shout out to Jess for creating the easy autonomous selector template, which we've used as the base for this. And we've modified it to include the motor temperatures so we can tell if our system is overheating or not. And here's a quick demonstration on how the autonomous selector works. A quick explanation on the motor temps. The colors depict how warm the motors are running and as they get hotter, the temperature values will increase. The colors change from blue to green, to yellow to orange, to red to purple. 
and when they get to red or purple, we know to either cool off the motors or do a quick swap. Thank you for watching. Hopefully some of this information was helpful and good luck to everyone in spin-up.